In this tech tip, we're going to take a look at the plastic part command inside of Autodesk Inventor called the Rule Fillet. We're going to take a look at its versatility over the traditional fillet command, how to access the tool because it's actually hidden from normal interfaces, and also how to actually use the command for not only the plastic sort of mentality, but also for metals, machine parts, and castings. When we start looking at the rule fillet command, we have to identify why it's a beneficial command here for us first. So I'm going to begin with the traditional fillet command for this plastic part. And what I would like to do is grab all of the edges of this particular grill feature that I've created already. Now, if I choose my feature selection method, and then I choose this particular grill, you're gonna see that it only picks up 100 edges. So it seems to be a sort of a cap that it hits. And in order for me to pick the other edges that I want for this grill, I'm gonna have to go through and pick on individual loops or edges to add it into my selection set. And that's not a very fun thing to do. It's gonna take a lot of selection time. I might grab more than what I want or maybe not enough of what I want for my edges. And overall, it's just very inefficient for this particular type of feature. Now, what if I did all fillets and all rounds? Well, had I done all fillets and all rounds, I would have to do it for the entire solid, and it would grab additional edges that I do not want filleted. I really want to focus on just the grill feature there. So let me cancel this, and let's turn on our rule fillet command. I'll go to my pull down here on my ribbon and make sure a plastic part is turned on. And there I can see the rule fillet command. I'll go ahead and start that. And here, I can begin my source selection by choosing either features or faces to specify how I want to build this rule. I'm going to use feature selection, and notice how my icon here changed to a pencil. Now, when it's in that mode, it wants me to fill in something for the radius or basically go through the rest of the command. I actually want to do a selection on screen, though, so I'll toggle that back to an arrow. And I want to do a feature selection of this grill. Notice how it picked all of the edges this time. It's exactly what I wanted. I can also tell the rule that this is going to be everything that's against the part or anything that's against an existing feature, which I can then select down here, or all free edges, or all edges, not just the free edges. So I'll go ahead and select that all edges here. We can see what that gives us. We can also do a tangent fillet or a G2 smooth fillet, depending on our nature of what we want. And we also have the ability for all fillets and all rounds based on that selection. If I hit my expanded arrow here, I can also see the ability to exclude specific faces or edges, as well as the other traditional items I see in my normal fillet command here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to choose OK for that, and you're going to see it's going to generate this fillet with all of those edges selected. I didn't have to go through and worry about extra selection sets or anything like that. Now, this probably isn't the best example of a plastic part with all these different fillets I have in here. May I want a very smooth top? So let me go back and do a rule fillet edit here. And instead of all edges, I'm going to say just the free edges. I'll say OK to that. And it updates to smooth out the top there, so there's no fillets going on there. But on the internals, we can see we have fillets there. And on the bottom side, we can see it's definitely molded with fillets there as well. So those are all my free edges. If I go back into the rule fillet command, you can also add an additional selection set to be more thorough for what you want to do. So let's say I want to do another feature over here. This one I'll do maybe slightly different. This one is free edges. And add another selection set for this feature that is also the against part. So you can basically change out how you want those fills to take place. If you don't want one, you just click off of it. And then you can go back. You can see zero is selected, so it's not going to do anything to it. Here I'll say OK to that. And I have 
an error message letting me know I have a problem with that rule fillet. Let me go ahead and edit that. And the issue is that fillet is way too big. There we go. And there's my finished rule fillet on the other side. Now, where else can we use a rule fillet? Well, we can use it in more than just plastics. It just happens to be on the plastic tab because that's really what it was invented for. However, it does a great job for other traditional manufacturing techniques with even just metal parts. So let's take a moment here to look at this other part. And you can see here I have a shell on a, it's a four millimeter shell on this part. And I basically have some fillets done on here, which are all fillets and all rounds with a traditional fillet command. What I'm going to do is unsuppress this feature I have in here. It's just an extra piece of material that's been added. And you can see the fillets automatically update because the rule of order of operations here says that this fillet takes place for all fillets and all rounds based on the history. So when this gets unsuppressed higher up in the tree, it becomes part of that all fillets and all rounds mentality. However, what if you don't want all fillets and all rounds but you do want it to follow certain rules. That's when we can use the rule fillet. So I'll go over here to this other part file, and we're gonna take a look at building rules into this that change based on the shape of the design as it adjusts. So I'll go back to my 3D model tab here, and I'm gonna start my rule fillet. This time for selection, I'm going to choose a face, this face here. Notice how it's trying to grab all the edges that go along on the inside there. Well, that's fine. You know, that's going to be good for my machine tool just as well. But instead of all edges, I want this other one here called incident edges. This is only available when you choose the face option. Now, when you choose incident edges, you have to specify a direction. I'm going to click on the face here again. You can see it's going up. If I change the direction, it's for all edges going down, which there are none. So I want this going up here. And I want this to be for all fillets only. I'm going to ignore the rounds because my machine tool is going to cut that out anyway. And I'm also going to do this again for the face on here down onto the inside. And we'll make this a little bit bigger, 0.125. Point one two five for that as well. All right, I'll choose OK, and there's my edges. Now, if I had this as an eye part or as an eye logic configuration and something happened back in the history or something had to change back in the history previous to this rule fillet being created, then this rule fillet will update based on that change and based on that rule. So currently my rule doesn't have any of these rounds taking place. So let me go back up here to my second extrusion. I'm going to add some additional profiles in here for this cut that I cut into the material. Notice how I'm adding additional fillets and rounds to this particular profile. I'll choose OK. And you can see it updates not to have those additional rounds in there. So based on how my history changes, the rule fillet can have a little bit more power, a little bit more say-so than just a traditional fillet command with the all fillets and all rounds. You can control this for the incident edges, for all edges, and it's just a little bit smarter when you don't want to try to build a programmatically intelligent part. And it can also go back into that rule fillet and tell it to exclude certain edges as well. So even though I've made this nice and programmatic, I said all fillets and all edges for my rounds and such, I can say, you know what, no matter what, ignore that one. Or no matter what, ignore this one over here. I'll choose OK, and that updates. Now this also has a lot of nice characteristics to use for any sort of casting as well, not just for a machined part like you see here. So this has been our look at the rule fillet command inside of Autodesk Inventor.